Hey guys, let's take a look at probability today. And uh, probability is defined as, it's a fraction, really. It's the number of outcomes that you want that goes on the top of the fraction. The bottom of the fraction is the number of outcomes there are possibly. So, I mean, it could be, I don't know, um, what's the odds that you will have a boy if, you are, if your mom's expecting, will she have a boy or a girl? Well, that the possibility of a boy would just be one, right? And the possibilities that are out there are either a boy or a girl, so it's two. So the you know, probability is one out of two. Um, it, it could range from, from zero to one. In other words, you could have somebody say, what are the odds that you will take just a normal die and you will roll a seven? And you can go, well, wait a minute, there's only one to six on that thing. We go, well, what's the probability still? Okay, well, you go, okay, well, there, there are zero chances and there are six. So zero out of, divided by six is still zero. That's your probability. When somebody says to you, what's the probability that you will roll uh, a one or greater with a die? And you go, okay, well, the possibilities of rolling a one or greater are one, two, three, four, and five, and six. So that's six out of six, and the probability is basically one or like 100%. So there you go. All right, let's do a couple of examples of these. You have a fair coin. It is tossed three times and comes up heads every time. So somebody goes, oh, heads, heads, and then heads, okay? What's the probability that on the next toss it will come up heads? Well, you're tossing a regular fair coin. What you toss the fourth time has nothing to do with what you toss the first three times. So it doesn't matter. You still have the fraction, which is this. The number of positive outcomes that you want, and that's a head. There's just one of those on a coin. Uh, and the possibilities you have are heads or tails, that's two. So that is your probability of tossing a heads on a coin the next time, one out of two. All right, here's another one. This is marbles, they're in some urn. Okay, there's eight red, it says. Okay, so I'll just draw red, 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 and red. Six green ones, okay. We'll go down here and do six green ones. So green, 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 and green. Okay, one marble is drawn and then is dropped back into the urn. Okay, so you drop, you draw it, look at it, clunk, back in there. So you're still at the same thing you had before. Then a second marble is drawn and dropped back into the urn. So the same thing happens, you reach in there, and drop, loop, look at it, okay, plump, back in there, and you're still back where you started from, all right? Both marbles were red. Okay, fine. If another marble is drawn, what's the probability that it'll be red? Well, this is just extra information here. We don't care if most marbles were red before. We're talking about what's the probability that it'll be red this time. And if you mix them all up and don't look, you'll have a probability that we can figure out. And again, the fraction is the number of positive outcomes that you want, that's on top, and the number of possible outcomes, that's on the bottom, that's your probability fraction. So the number of possible outcomes, let's put that first since that's on the bottom. Well, there's eight reds and six greens, that gives you 14 possible, right? The number that we want, what's the probability that it'll be red? Well, there's eight of them, right? So that's eight out of 14. And if you want to reduce the fraction, that's four out of seven. Those are your probabilities uh, that you will draw a red marble. All right, look at them. Look at the die here. Our single die is rolled three times. You roll a one, you roll a four, and you roll a three. And again, don't forget, if you have a normal, regular die, or a coin, or whatever, it doesn't matter what happened before, what you do the next time is completely a self-contained possibility, all right? Then they ask you, what's the probability that the next roll will produce a number greater than two? So we need to think about a die, and you know, it looks like this, and it has boom, boom, like that, and I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure which is which. There's a two there, I don't know, a four maybe, five? I can't tell. Anyway, there's your die. What's the possibility a probability that the next roll will produce a number greater than two, whether well, are numbers greater than two are three on the die, four, a five, and a six, right? It has to be greater, it doesn't include two. So those are, those are four chances you have. And of course, the bottom part of the fraction is how many total possibilities you have, and that's six. All right, if you reduce that, it'll be two out of three. So that is the probability you have of rolling a number greater than two on a fair die. All right, let's take a look at one more here. We have two dice to roll this time, right? And 
What's the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is a seven? Now, this is an interesting question. You, you, I might, you might have seen in, oh, I don't know, some TV show where a guy's trying to roll a seven, you know, gambling or something like that. Um, what are the possibilities of doing that? Well, first off, let's figure out what are the possibilities of rolling two dice and getting a seven, right? Okay, so we could roll, you know, a one and a six. You could roll backwards, so a six and a one. You could do a two and a five. You could do a five and a two. And you could go three and four, and then four and three. Okay, so those are six possibilities. The other question is, how many possibilities are there total rolling two dice? Well, let's hold off on that for a second. Let's look at these possibilities. How many different things can you roll with two dice? You know you can roll as low as a one and a one, right? And then you can as high as a six and a six, right? Okay, so if you did a one and a one, that's a possibility, right? If one was the, let's say you rolled one die at a time, one, and then, and then you roll a one. You could also do this, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six, right? So those, those are six possibilities just there if you roll a one first. Well, if you think about it logically, you could do the same thing all the way with every number. You could go, oh, if I rolled a two first, there would be six possibilities there. And if I roll a three first, there's six more, and then a four first, and then a five first, and then a six first. Okay, so these are all the total possibilities you would have. Six times six is 36. That is the number of things you can roll on two dice. The positive outcomes you want, like lucky seven, these are the chances you have, there they are. So six possibilities out of a possibility of total of 36, which if you reduce the fraction, that's one out of six. So that is your probability that you're gonna roll a seven at any one time. All right, let's well, so the next part. What are the possibilities you're gonna roll a number greater than eight? Well, let's figure this out. Let's start listing the possibilities there are by rolling two dice that's greater than eight. Not eight, but greater than eight. We can go five, four and five. We could go five and four. That gives you the nine, right? What else would give you the nine? Yeah. Three and six and six and three, right? Those are other possibilities. Okay, there's a nine. All right, how about a 10? Well, we'll give you a 10. You could go four and six. You could go six and four. You could go five and five. And that's it, right? How about 11? You could go six and five. And you could go five and six, right? Okay, how about 12? Just six and six, right? Okay, so you can count these. There are 10 possibilities. There are a total of 36 possibilities to roll if there are two dice. And to reduce that fraction by a factor of 2 gives you 5 out of 18, and that is your probability of rolling a number greater than 8. Okay. All right, let's look at another type of probability problem. It's called designated order, which means what are the odds you're going to do something first that matches something, and then something else that matches a certain thing. And the way you do this, <coughs> excuse me, is you multiply. In other words, let's say uh, that somebody says to you, what are the odds of your rolling um, a two on a die and then rolling a number that is greater than five? Let's do that. First you roll a two, then you roll a number greater than five. Well, all we need to do is go like this. Well, the odds of rolling a number greater than, or excuse me, you're rolling a two or one and six, right? Just a two. Then, what are your odds of rolling a number greater than five? Well, obviously there's only one possibility of greater than five, right? That's just a six, okay? So one chance out of six again. So you actually multiply these together. Multiply these together. And you'll get one out of 36, all right? If somebody said to you, what's my odds of rolling a two? Oh, I forget, let's go three. A three, and then a number Oh, I don't know. How about less than five? All right. Well, again, on the first one, your odds of rolling a three on one roll are one out of six. <clears throat> the odds of your rolling a number less than five? Well, that's a one, a two, a three, and a four out of six, right? So you're going to multiply by four out of six chances. So you go across, that's going to be four. Six times six is 36. <coughs> if you Reduce this, this is one out of nine chances. So that those are your chances of rolling first to three, then a number less than five, okay? That's how you do it. You simply multiply those together. All right, let's do one. A fair coin is tossed four times. 
What is the probability that the first two times it comes up heads and the last two times it comes up tails? Well, it looks like this, in other words. It's going to be heads, heads, tails, and tails. And what you're going to do is simply <clears throat> treat each one of these flips as one thing. And just and at the very end, multiply all those probabilities together and you'll get your answer. And it's pretty easy to tell that if you do, you know, heads, what are your odds of rolling it, I mean, uh, flipping a head? That's one out of two. You're going to multiply that by this one. Well, again, that's one out of two, right? And then the third time, a tail, again, one out of two. And then obviously the last time is one out of two again. So the odds of your going, hey, look at this, I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna flip a head, then a head, then a tail, then a tail, in that order, watch this. It's, you have a <clears throat> very small chance of that happening. Multiply the ones all the way across, that's a one. Two times two times two times two is 16. You have about, you, have, you do have a one out of 16 chances um, of doing that in that exact order. Okay. All right, let's look at this. You've got a spinner that's spun twice. What's the probability that the spinner stops on four and then on three? Well, again, let's treat each of these as individual probabilities, then we'll multiply them together. Well, first off, you tell me, what are the, what's the probability that you're gonna spin and it's gonna land on a four? One out of four, right? Okay, you got that. Now, what's the probability that's gonna land on a three? Again, yeah, it's one out of four, right? I mean, the three is taking up exactly one fourth of that spinner. So again, you're talking about a one out of 16 chances. Now, you know, just to prove that this is actually work, working, this actually does work, you tell me the possibilities of spinning this thing twice. What, what numbers could you get? What are all the possibilities? Now, if you think about it, let's say, <clears throat> let's just say you spun it and you got a one. Well, if you, you know, if you did it twice in a row, the possibilities if you got a one first were one, it would be one and one, one and two, one and three, one and four, right? Well, let's say you spun it, you started all over, you spun it and you got a two first. Well, your possibilities are two and then one, two and then two, two and then three, or two and then four, right? And you can just keep doing the same thing. You can say, oh, I got a three first, I got a one. Oh, a three, then a two, three, then a three, and then three, and a four. And you, oh, I got a four, and then a one. Oh, I, I, roll, I spun a four, and a two, I spun a four, and a three, and I spun a four, and a four. Well, you can see that the total possibilities of spinning this thing twice, you have four, you know, eight, 12, 16 possibilities. They're asking, what are the, what are the probabilities that you do a four first, then a three? Well, there it is. There's only one of those that happens out of 16. That's why we're right when we say one out of 16 chances, okay? It's just, it, at some point, somebody figured this out mathematically that, oh, these are all the possibilities, and they went, wait a minute, we can just multiply each one of these together, and we got it, which is what we do now. Okay, try your practice problems, and uh, pause it, and I'll give you the answer to A. Okay, A is one out of eight times. One half times one half times one half. Pause it and try B. All right, B is one out of two times. Okay, pause it and try C. All right, C is five out of 36. And don't forget the number of things that can happen if you roll a die twice would be this, one out of six times one out of six. That's one out of 36. The possibilities that match what we want, there are five of them, okay? All right, pause it and try D. All right, and a deck of cards, there are 13 cards. There are two through 10, which means, which gives you nine. Then you have a jack, queen, king, and an ace. That's four more, so that's 13, okay? And then the pos positive possibilities you want are when you reduce the fraction, six out of 13. So, okay, all right, that's it. We will see you next time.